So in this video, we're going to learn how to use quotient rule. So let's do that with the help of an example that I have over here. So whenever you have an expression, okay, so let's say you have uh, an expression which is in the form of a fraction like you have over here, such that that expression basically consists of two different expressions and you can't write them as a single expression. Like you can't simplify them like we have over here. You have x plus one over three x minus two. So you cannot simplify or cancel something and just bring it down to a single expression. That is when you can use quotient rule. Now you may be thinking that we can also use product rule over here. If you take three x minus two in the numerator, make the power negative one and then use, it'll look like you're multiplying two expressions. That means you can use product rule. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can totally do that. But since we have to learn quotient rule, it's best we do that. Okay. So basically, this is what quotient rule looks like u upon v. Okay. So the expression in the numerator is u, the expression in the denominator is v. Okay. So whenever you have to differentiate something that looks like this, so dy by dx basically looks like this. So you have v u prime, okay, minus, so you might remember what I said in the last video, that make sure that you memorize it as vu prime plus uv prime when you're doing product rule, because in this case, it's vu prime minus uv prime, okay? So in product rule, if you mess up the order, you get away with it, but in quotient rule, if you mess up the order, sadly, you don't get away with it because there is minus, okay? So vu prime minus uv prime upon v square is how you differentiate it, okay? So let's do an example. So let's say you have x plus one as u, so u prime just becomes one, that's it v is equal to 3x minus 2, which means v prime becomes 3, okay? So now, as you know, I like to make these arrows. v u prime means 3x minus 2 times 1, which is just going to be 3x minus 2. Let's write dy by dx over here, okay? Minus u v prime, that means minus 3 into x plus 1. You can see that I've changed the order a little. I've written v prime first and then u. It doesn't matter since we're multiplying them. Over v squared, which means over three x minus two, the whole thing square. Okay. Now there may be a bit of simplification that's required here. Let's see. So you have three x minus two. Now be careful. You have minus three, which is going to get multiplied by x. So that's minus three x. Okay. Number one. And then you have minus three, which is then going to get multiplied by plus one. So that's minus three again. So three x minus three x get canceled out. And in the numerator, we're going to simplify it further shortly. So you have minus two minus three which is equal to minus five over three x minus two, the whole thing squared. And there you go, that's your answer, simple. Okay, so we're gonna do the examples now. And the examples that I'm gonna do are gonna be from the same book, okay? So these are basically a few parts from question number five. You can see that I'm gonna do the ones that I've highlighted, okay? So let's see, part B is y equals to x over, so first things first, uh, let's uh, rewrite u and v. So u is, as you can see, x. V is, I'm gonna prefer to write it as one minus two x to the power, sorry, not minus half, in fact, to the power positive half, okay? Now, differentiating u prime is pretty easy, it just becomes one. If you differentiate v prime, however, so here you have to be a bit careful, half into one minus two x, to the power minus half into the differential of one minus two x, which is going to be minus two. So two and two get canceled out. And then you can write this nicely by writing as minus one over square root of one minus two x. So you can probably see that I've done two steps at once. One is that I've shifted it in the denominator to make the power positive. And instead of writing it as half, I've written it as square root, okay? So those are the two steps that I have done at once. Okay, next thing is vu prime minus uv prime upon v squared, okay? So I'll do that over here to save some space. So v u prime basically means square root of one minus two x, and you can see that I'm switching to square root again, okay? Minus uv prime, so that means minus x. So uv prime, this is where you have to be very careful. So minus x, which is then gonna get multiplied by minus one. Or you can sort of anticipate that overall it's gonna become plus, and just write it plus from the get-go. So plus x over square root of one minus two x. And this is where you have to be really careful. Remember that you have to do divided by one v square basically, okay? So v square means that you're gonna divide it by one minus two x. Well, what happens when you square something that has a square root? So when you square it, that means the square and the square root just sort of take care of each other or they can cancel out each other, okay? Now, from this point onwards, there's a decent amount of simplification that's required. Let's see. The denominator, the LCM, basically is gonna be one minus two x. Okay, so remember this 
is what we're simplifying right now, okay? 1 minus 2x inside the square root. So this needs to get multiplied by 1 minus 2x inside the square root. That means the numerator also gets multiplied by 1 minus 2x inside the square root, which gives us 1 minus 2x, okay? Plus this, we just need to multiply by 1. So that means this also gets multiplied by 1. So plus x. Now, this is where you have to be slightly careful. So instead of doing divided by 1 minus 2x, I'm just going to write, uh, instead of doing upon 1 minus 2x, I'm going to write divide 1 minus 2x, okay? And you can sort of make a bracket around it if you want. If you don't, it's perfectly all right, okay? Now, from this point onwards, there is, again, some simplification that's required. So dy by dx is equal to, let's see, what do we have? So 1 minus x over 1 minus 2x to the power half. Now, I'll tell you why I switched it to half all of a sudden. Into Now, what happens when you change division to multiplication is that you reciprocate it, okay? So what's the reciprocal of 1 minus 2x? It's just going to be 1 over 1 minus 2x, okay? And then you can simplify this. Now, why did I write it to half? Well, why did I convert it to half? Well, here's the reason, because half into 1 so you can see that you have sort of have the same basis and that means same and same basis are multiplied. The powers are going to be added. So when you multiply one minus X to one, nothing happens. So it just remains one minus X. And when you multiply one minus two X to the power half to one minus two X to the power one, it can be written as one minus two X to the power half plus one, which is three upon two. And there you go. That's the answer. Okay. Now, one thing that I'd like to tell you is that with quotient rule, it's a lot of simplification, okay? And not just with quotient rule, with product rule also, there's a lot of simplification that's required. So make sure that you sort of gradually develop an appetite for it and you sort of are mentally prepared when you're solving a question like this. Okay, it's not difficult. It's just a lot of algebra, a lot of simplification, taking common, simplifying LCM and all of that that's involved, which is why students generally get it wrong. Not because it's difficult, because there are a lot of steps that you need to, to follow before you get to the final answer, okay? So I'm going to do one more example for you, and that's part D, which is 5 under root x over 3 plus x. Okay, now let's write down u and v. So u in this case is 5, x to the power half, okay? So this is how I would prefer to write it so that I can differentiate it easily. And v in this case is 3 plus x. So u prime inevitably becomes half into 5, x to the power half minus 1, which means minus half. Now I'm just going to write it nicely, and I would prefer to write it as 5 over to square root x, okay? And then let's find out v prime. So v prime is just gonna be one because that's what you get when you differentiate three plus x. So v u prime plus u v prime upon v square, okay? So v u prime, and this, by the way, is gonna be dy by dx from this point onwards. So three plus x is v. When you multiply it by u prime, that means you're multiply, multiplying it by five over two under root x, okay? Minus u v prime, which means five square root x upon v square. Now, here's what I would suggest. Instead of writing upon v square, you write it as 3 plus x, the whole thing square, so that it becomes easy for you to then later on simplify, okay? Now, we have to take the LCM. So, the LCM will be 2 under root x, okay? So, what do you need to multiply this with? Well, you don't need to multiply it by anything, so just 1. So, that means for 3 plus x into 5 gets multiplied by 1, okay? And this is the point where we can also expand the two brackets, okay? So, 3 into 5 is 15 plus 5x. And this, since we have 1 here, that means we need to multiply it by 2 root x. That means the numerator also gets multiplied by 2 root x, okay? Now, this is the point where you have to do a bit of simplification. So, 5 into 2 becomes 10, and root x into root x is x, okay? Anything which has square root, if you multiply it by the same thing, so the square root just cancels out, okay? So when you change division to multiplication, what do you get? You get 3 plus x, the whole thing square, okay? You reciprocate it. So 5x minus 10x becomes minus 5x, so 15 minus 5x over 2 under root x, which you can see is now being multiplied by 3 plus x, the whole thing square. And this is your dy by dx. You can't simplify it further, so this is your final answer. Now we're gonna do some word problems, okay? So again, word problems are basically, there's no, no new concept over here, except that the questions are slightly more complex and you have to sort of plug in a value to get some value or maybe set it equal to a certain value to find a certain value, okay? So let's read the question here. It says, find the coordinates of the point on the curve where dy by dx equals to zero. So that means we know what dy by dx is and we just need to find out the point. So that means we need to find out the x 
as well as the y. And since the question has used the word points here, that means there could be multiple, okay? So just sort of, a few, these are a few things which if you pay close attention to at the very start, so you sort of have an end in mind and you know what exactly it is that you're looking for, okay? So this we're gonna differentiate using quotient rule only. So u equals to x square, which means u prime is two x, okay? V is equals to two x minus one, which means that v prime is gonna be equal to two. Okay, now v u prime minus u v prime upon v squared, okay? So it's a good idea to, for as long as you haven't memorized the quotient rule to write it over and over again, okay? So v u prime basically means that two uh, x minus one into two x minus u v prime basically means 2x square because that's what you get when you do when you multiply x square by 2 over v square which means 2x minus 1 the whole thing square okay now since we have to set it equal to 0 I think I'm going to do it straight away and simplify in the same step so 2x into 2x is 4x square minus 2x because that's what 1 into 2x is going to give me minus 2x square over 2x minus 1 the whole thing squared, and we're gonna set it equal to what? We're gonna set it equal to zero, okay. So four x squared minus two x squared gives us what? That gives us two x squared minus two x, which is equal to zero. So what are we gonna do now? Well, we're gonna solve it like we would solve any other quadratic equation. So that means two x common into x minus one equals to zero, which leads to the conclusion that it's either two x that's equal to zero or x minus one that's equal to zero, which further leads to the conclusion that either x is equal to zero or x is equal to one. Now, these are the two values of x, which we are now going to use to find out the y coordinate, okay? So remember the equation for y was basically x over 2x minus one, okay? Now let's see what happens when x equals to zero. Well, you can sort of work this out mentally, zero over two into zero, that's zero, zero minus one is minus one. Anyway, it's irrelevant because y is also going to be equal to zero. So here's one point, zero, zero. And let's see what is the value of y when x is equals to one. So when x is equals to one, again, you can sort of work this out mentally. One over two minus one, so that's one over one, which means one, and there you go. The two points at which the gradient is equal to zero, which by the way is the turning point, that's something we'll find out later on, are basically these, zero, zero, and one, one. Okay, now let's do another question, which is question number six. Let's see what it says. It says find the gradient of the curve, so and so, at the point minus four comma six. Okay, so this is a fairly easy question because we're not gonna waste too much time trying to simplify this question, okay? We're gonna keep it simple. So u, as you can see, is equals to x minus two, which means u prime is gonna be equal to one. V, as you can see, is basically x plus five to the power half, which means that v prime is equal to half into x plus five to the power minus half, okay? Into one, which then again makes no difference. However, I will prefer to write this nicely which is one over two root x plus five, okay? So vu prime into uv prime is what will give us divide by dx. So vu prime basically means square root of x plus five minus uv prime basically means minus x minus two over two square root of x plus five upon v square. So what happens when you square square root of x plus five? So you're just left with x plus five. Okay, now, like I said, I'm not gonna bother simplifying because all I need to do is I just need to plug in the value of x, which is equal to minus four inside the square root, okay? So minus four plus five is gonna give us one, minus minus four minus two, which is gonna give us minus six, over two into minus four plus five, which is again gonna give us one, over minus four plus five, again, that's gonna give us one, okay? So let's see, what do we get? So square root of one is one, plus six upon two, so that's three, over one, so one plus three is four, and four upon one is equal to four. So that means the gradient or dy by dx of this curve when x equals to minus four is four, and that is the correct answer. So yeah, that also brings me to the end of this video. I hope you've understood the concept of product rule. In the next video, we will start equation of tangent and equation of normal. So I'll see you guys then. Until then, take care, bye-bye.